for the sake of those who are interested in gene pool or uh, evolution simulations in general, I thought I would document this because it's uh, rather interesting. Um, I have gene pool set to uh, viewing most efficient right now, most energy efficient. And uh, you might notice there's quite a variety and it's switching back and forth depending on which one is uh, getting around the best with the least energy but um, although they're they're all very similar in design uh, there's there's a slight slight variety in in the physical form and a lot of variety as far as the colorations go and uh, if I look, if if I um, go into the tweak settings, you can see I do have similar color set as the uh, preference criteria. Um, so in that sense, um, in that sense, they um, you might expect that they should be all about the same color. But um, if you look up here at the food growth delay, it's currently set to 300. And if I go to the population graph. Um, here I'll have to bring this up so you can see it a little better. Um, let me extend the bottom of the screen a little. There's the population. You can see there's only three food bits, only three swim bots left right now, so they're actually dying off. And I don't know if they're going to survive or not, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to document this right away. Um, they may not be able to even find each other. Uh, there's there's 60 food bits and uh, there, of course the food bits are climbing now a little bit because there's so few swim bots to even eat them but uh, like I said at a um, growth delay of 300 uh, normally 80 is as high as you can get it to go I um, tweak the program a little so at any rate um, just a quick documentation of that and uh, I'm going to let it run and see what happens. Well, I finally lost the last swim bot. At a food growth delay of 456, you can see the population hung right close to zero for a very long time, uh, with the food bits running right around 50 or 60, and uh, finally ran out. So. I'm going to go ahead and post this um, with with the um, last few surviving swim bots that I uh, managed to save um, in the description. Swim bot load, show what they look like. Here's number one. Number two. number three and number four and if I just real quick um, drop this food growth delay down to zero and, and let some food grow up in here really fast those swim bots should be somewhere close to each other right now. Let's see, view whole pool. Where are they? Well, they're they're already pretty scattered. So I'm just gonna drop a few more of them in here as soon as the food's up a bit. Actually, I think the food's up quite a bit already. It is. It's already hit a thousand. So tweak, set everything to the defaults, and right here in the center of the pool, I'm gonna go. Swimbot load one. Deselect it. Swimbot load two. Deselect. Swimbot load three. Deselect. Swimbot load four. Deselect and take a look for the most prolific it's saying this one mm, 
which doesn't have any offspring yet. So that means nobody's nobody's actually reproduced. I'll let this run for a little while and then I'll film just a little bit more um, just to show how it went. And I'm back and uh, as you can see uh, after I let the food uh, bit food bit population um, up over a thousand uh, the swim bot population quickly went up over 500 well, somewhat quickly um, ate up most of the food dived back down with the food and has uh, pretty much leveled off since then as the foods uh, continued to slowly climb upward this is at the default settings um, you might notice it says 40 here on the food growth delay, but it's way over on the left. 40 is the default, but I set the maximum at uh, 777. I'll spin this over here and show you. So um, that's why 40 is way over there on the left. So I've went ahead and saved four swim bots uh, from this also, and. Uh, I will try to include those four along with uh, the four from earlier in the description of this video. And also, the whole time this Swimbot uh, population has been running in this simulation, I have also had a second gene pool simulation running. And you can see the, the graph looks a lot different in this one. Uh, the Swimbots, rather coincidentally, um, look quite a bit alike, look quite a bit like the ones in here, well, ex except for those. Um, not sure what the population is up to right now, let's see. Um, 100 swim bots. And this one is running at the default settings, but what I had done early on is, um, and, and this one is not tweaked by the way, um, so you can see the default does land right in the middle. But what I had done early on is um, to set the food growth delay all the way up to 80 for a while, all the way down to zero for a while, all the way up to 80 for a while, all the way down to zero for a while, and basically um, made the swim bots adapt to it. And uh, that was um, that idea came from something uh, Mr. Uh, Cheeky Monkey is back had uh, mentioned he was doing, and and I just sort of did a variation of it to see how it would turn out. So I'll probably save a swim bot or two from this one as well. I don't want to do that right now because um, this gene pool simulation is running in the same folder as the other one. So if I save the swim bots right now, um, it will actually save over the other ones. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording. And I've decided to do one more thing. Uh, to add to this video just because uh, I'd like to point out one of the advantages to running uh, more than one simulation out of the same directory. There are both advantages and disadvantages to, more, to running more than one uh, gene pool simulation out of the same directory. Um, one of the disadvantages of course is if you if you save files from one and then save the same file names from the other of course they will overwrite each other. But um, as you can see, the population has gone up quite a bit, and these are some interesting looking swim bots. So something I can do is I can grab swim bots out of here. I'll just go save, uh, view most prolific um, swim bot, uh, save swim bot one, um, view most energy efficient and save that as swimbot2 and then I'm going to switch over to the other running simulation and let's see I'm viewing most prolific in here that one's about to die so let it go to the next one let's see is there much food around here no, not really, not in that area. Over here there's a lot of food. So I'm going to go zoom in on that area where there's food. And I'm going to just um, go swim bot load one and 
deselect that swim bot load two load that and now I have a couple of those in this simulation and if I zoom in on them you can see there's my swim bots from the other simulation uh, imported into this one and I'll go ahead and load another copy of one and another copy of two now that was something I had not been doing earlier but like I said I wanted to show uh, that, it, that it is possible um, you obviously can do the same thing by saving the pool and exiting out and uh, loading up a different pool but this allows you to do it very very dynamically and so I'm going to go ahead and find the most prolific in here so save that as three and um, look for the most energy efficient and that's that one which really isn't of much benefit but I'll go ahead and save that anyway as swimbot 4 just to uh, demonstrate how it can be done and then I'll go in here and deselect and swimbot load number 4 and there it is and uh, Oh, deselect it, load swimbot 3, and I'm going to go find an area with plenty of food. Oops, wrong button. If you hole pool and zoom in over here, plenty of food in this general area. Swimbot load number three and swimbot uh, deselect that load another copy of number three and load a number four and as you can see I've just imported swim bots from one simulation into the other thanks for watching I hope you've enjoyed my video and I hope you'll uh, click the like button and subscribe and um, find more to enjoy Thanks.